My name is Corey Reed. I'm an associate professor at the University of Texas at Austin, where I specialize in the literature of 16th and 17th century Spain, which includes the work of Cervantes, the author of Don Quixote. He was a colorful figure. He was born in 1547 in Spain and uh, died in 1616, which was 400 years ago, this very year that we're talking right now. Cervantes was a soldier before he became a writer and uh, spent about 10 or 11 years of his life living outside of Spain. He participated in the Battle of Lepanto in Greece in 1571 which was an important naval victory. He was wounded in that battle. He lost the use of his left arm, um, which he wore as a, 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 battle, a, a badge of honor, really, uh, for having participated in what he called the most glorious event of recent times. And uh, when he uh, was returning back to Spain from those military campaigns, he was captured. His ship was taken over by pirates from North Africa and he was held prisoner in Algiers for four years when he was then ransomed by a religious organization in Spain who paid money to have him set free. So he comes back to Spain in the 1580s and he starts writing. Some critics will say that it was precisely the act of writing through the trauma of his captivity experience uh, that started him writing works of fiction. And indeed, the first uh, literary works that he produces are plays, and they're about captivity. They're about war. They're about the, uh, uh, the trauma of war. And um, he starts becoming a very prolific writer, and over the course of 20 years, writes poetry, he writes prose fiction, he writes dramas, and of course, Don Quixote is the, uh, the, the work that he's most remembered for. Uh, which was published in two parts, as two novels really, one published in 1605 and then the second part in 1615. Don Quixote is a book about readers. It's a book about books. It's a book about readers reading books and writing books and having success with those readings and writings and sometimes failing with them. And so his main character is a reader. This is a man, Don Quixote, who is a member of the sort of landed gentry class. He's a nobleman in the sense that he's got a lot of land and a good family name, but he doesn't have a title and he doesn't have a lot of money. And in order to read the books that he enjoys reading, he sells all of the family land to buy these chivalric romances, these stories of knights conquering giants, rescuing their damsels in distress, and he devours these books from sunup to sundown. He pulls all-nighters, reads them through the night, and the narrator then tells us through all this reading, lack of eating, lack of sleep, his brains dry up and he goes crazy. And the madness, the form of his craziness, is to enact his favorite stories from the fiction books that he reads in the real world. So he fashions himself as a knight, a knight errant, who goes out who administers justice, rights wrongs, corrects injustices, rescues uh, the, the poor and the, the meek and the disadvantaged. But in doing so, he causes more problems than he solves. He ends up wandering through the highways and the roadside inns of rural Spain, interrupting commerce, attacking the uh, 17th century equivalent of, of, of truckers and, and um, uh, commercial activity. He becomes violent himself, uh, beating and thrashing the people that he encounters, attempting to correct injustices that he perceives as the strong abusing the weak, and ending up creating more problems in the process. And we laugh at those problems. It has such an effect on the development of literature worldwide. And then a second answer to that question might be, it really gets to the essence of what it means to be human. And that's a message that resonates with people in all generations, including our own. So to take that first part, um, what about this book um, is so influential in literary history? Um, up until the time of Cervantes, um, 
prose fiction was something that was still just coming onto the literary scene. Literature had been written primarily in verse and poetry, and the, the prose books that were being published in this time were romances. Among them, the romances of chivalry about knights rescuing damsels in distress, um, declaring their victories to their lady loves, and so on. And these books were set in an idealized world where there was a clear distinction between good and evil, right versus wrong, and these books were very symbolic in their treatment of sort of ideals, moral values that the heroes and the characters represented. What Cervantes ends up doing is he sets his story in our world with characters who are not symbols but real individuals fleshed out with all their contradictions, with all their problems, uh, and sets them in action in the real world that we recognize and they are shaped and formed by their experience in everyday reality. So these books speak very much to the nature of human existence. What are the issues that we grapple with in our daily lives? What are the problems involved in social interactions? What's the role of human psychology in, in all of this? And so Cervantes ends up taking bits and pieces from all of the literary genres known to him, mixing them all up and creating something new, which we now call a novel. Don Quixote really is considered to be the first uh, type of fiction that we now call novels by some scholars. Others who, uh, who may disagree will at least see that the roots of what we now call the novel can be found in Cervantes' work. So that's sort of the literary take on that question, why we still read it. The other issue is how Cervantes treats humanity, human existence. What does it mean to be a human being? Um, he takes these two characters who are very dissimilar. One, who, uh, Don Quixote, who is an educated man, uh, reads a lot of books. Sancho Panza, his sidekick, who is illiterate, who comes from the countryside, and they form a very fast friendship. So the book explores the bonds of friendship. It explores issues of human dignity, uh, despite the artificial social creations that separate human beings, class structure, wealth, education levels. So the, the episode of the windmills is one that comes to mind, right? Don Quixote goes out into the world with his sidekick Sancho Panza and they see 30 windmills on the hillside. Knights would not have adventures with windmills. But knights can have adventures with giants, so he transforms those objects, which are commercial objects, machines that are grinding grain for sale in the marketplace, and he transforms them instead into giants. And so he fashions this adventure as a knight's attack on menacing giants. He mounts on horseback, grabs his lance, and charges at the windmills, pierces the arms of the windmill, and then the wind kicks up, and it starts literally throwing Don Quixote for a loop. Now, where most of us would learn from this experience, say, whoops, maybe I should do that again, he just simply says, at the last minute, the evil enchanter who's been pursuing me transformed those giants into windmills to deprive me of a victory. And Sancho scratches his head and says, how can you possibly have seen giants where these are windmills and concludes that his master must be a little bit cuckoo. So he goes out to have adventures but he, what he ends up doing is hurting other people, hurting himself and not learning from the experiences in the world. Don Quixote is asking us the question about whether art imitates life or whether life imitates art. Don Quixote imitates art, imitates literature, imitates fiction as the model for living his life and it brings disastrous results, which we laugh at because they're funny and they're comical and they're crazy misadventures. But as the book goes on, we start seeing that there's a little bit of a method to his madness, that Don Quixote is actually trying to find meaning in a world that has disavowed itself of the noble virtues and values that he sees in these chivalric books that he so desperately wants to reintroduce into 
a modern world that has forgotten those values. One of the issues I think about this book that make it modern in, um, uh, for us in the, in the 21st century is the way in which Cervantes tells stories from multiple perspectives simultaneously. In the middle of book one, Don Quixote's story gets sidelined by a, a story of star-crossed lovers, and there are four of them who fall in and out of love, steal each other's girlfriends, but they end up happily ever after. But the only way they can bring about the successful resolution of their problems is through each one of them telling his or her story in succession, uh, which gives us as readers a different take on that story. And it's only when each of the four gets to complete his or her story, they're able to resolve their problems together. The way in which alternate sides of reality are presented to us uh, becomes an important theme of this book. How do people perceive the world? Is truth a function of what we believe, our upbringing, the way we've been raised, the issues that we bring to, um, to what we see around us? So that's a very modern way of, of looking at Don Quixote, the idea that human subjectivity informs our perception of reality is an idea that uh, we're still, that we consider very modern today.